This last week has been absolutely insane for the world of cybersecurity, Linux, and open source. A backdoor, which is a piece of code that gives an attacker direct access to our system, was discovered in an open source program that is used by most of the servers and computers that power our digital life. As a matter of fact, many of us have that program installed in our machines right now. The backdoor got a 10 out of 10 critical vulnerability score and the crazy thing is that it was discovered by accident. None of the security processes we have in place caught it. We got extremely lucky. Usually when there is an open source vulnerability in an open source project, it is caused by an honest mistake. A well-intentioned programmer, most of the time working for free, makes a mistake while writing code and by accident introduces a vulnerability that an attacker can take advantage of. But that is not what happened in this case. This was a planned effort that took years to pull off. The way the attack used a public open source project without no one noticing, to the way it was discovered, with even the CEO of Microsoft talking about it. It's all mind-blowing. Is a program that is in nearly all Linux and all Unix like operating systems. And the reason why this attack is so scary is because of how wide the attack surface is. 96% of the top million websites and 90% of cloud computing services run on Linux. You can't go online and not interact with a Linux server. XZUtils is a program for compressing and decompressing data. You can think of it as a more advanced version of what you use to create and open zip files in your machine. It is a small but crucial program that is even used to compress the Linux kernel kernel itself. Yet it was maintained for free by a single person named Lasse Colin. That was until 2021, when a developer named Jia Tan decided to help maintain the project which is when the attack began. Jia Tan submitted various patches to the project that were actually helpful to slowly gain trust. In April of 2022, a user named Jigar Kumar sends the first email complaining that the patches never get released and that the last release was 7 years ago. Then in May of 2022, another user named Dennis Enns sends a another email asking if XZ for Java is still being maintained. To this, Lasse Collins replies that no new features are being added but bugs are being fixed and that Jia Tan has been helping with XZ utilities and will have a bigger role soon. To this, Jigar Kumar replies pressuring Lasse Collins saying that progress will not happen until there is a new maintainer, saying that the current maintainer lost interest or doesn't care to maintain anymore, and that it is sad to see for a repo like this. He keeps insisting in another email saying why wait until 5.4 to change maintainer? Why delay what your repo needs? He even sends more emails, asking why there is no progress on patches that Gia sent. And then his ends comes back with another email pressuring Lasse Colin to give the maintainership of XZ to someone else. After those emails were sent, Dennis Enns and Jigar Kumar were never seen again. When we read these emails today, it is obvious that these users are most likely the same person, pressuring the original maintainer of XZ Utils to give Giatan maintainer powers to independently push and merge code, which sadly ended up working. In January 6th of 2023, we can see Giatan merging their first commit to the XZ repository, which means they got full access to it. In March of 2023, Giatan removes Lasse Calling as the primary contact for the XZ utilities package in a platform run by Google for finding and reporting security vulnerabilities. And finally, in January of 2024, Giatan moves the website of XZ Utils to GitHub Pages, finally getting full control. It is worth mentioning that all this time, Giatan was writing code, merging patches, talking to translators, and basically maintaining the project well. From 2021 to 2024, Giatan worked to gain the trust of Lasse Colin, and finally it worked. The stage was set. Giatan had full control. All that was left was at the backdoor. But even with full control, how can someone add a backdoor? door to a project that is public and open source. In February 23 of 2024, Giatan merges a commit that has a bunch of test files to be used to test that the compression and decompression is working correctly. This wasn't suspicious because it makes sense. If you are building a compression program, you want to test that it is working with some generic files, except that those files were not generic at all. They actually contained the code for the backdoor. This is part of what makes the attack so brilliant. Test folders are the last place anyone would suspect to look for malicious code. Adding the backdoor in the source code of the program would be too obvious, and many would have caught it. On the other hand, a new file in the tests folder doesn't seem like a big deal. The next day, Gia Tan packaged and built the backdoor version 5.6.0 of XZ Utils plus a script called build to hostm 4 That script was not in the Git repository, but was included in the packaged version of the program that Gia Tan published. The packaged version of a program, also called a tarball, is how most Unix software is distributed, and it can sometimes include scripts that are not tried 
extract in Git, but that helps set up and configure things when the program is first installed in a machine. In this case, however, the config script was modified to bring the backdoor from the tests folder and install it in the system that was installing XZ utils. And just like that, a backdoor was added to an open source project that is used everywhere and no one noticed. Soon after that, Giatan and other ghost accounts opened multiple bug reports and requests trying to get the latest version of XZ utils, the backdoored version, added to Ubuntu, Fedora, and Debian. It all looked very innocent. A new version of a package was released and the maintainers were telling everybody to upgrade it. All very common. Giatan actually succeeded and XZ utils was shipped in Fedora Rawhide and Fedora Linux 40 Beta. It was only a matter of time for XZ to be added to the rest. If no one had caught this backdoor, the attackers would have been able to log in to every computer that is running Ubuntu, Debian, or Fedora that is connected to the internet, which is insane. What is even more insane is the fact that the backdoor was caught by accident and caught not by a security researcher or someone working for a Linux distribution. It was caught by a PostgreSQL developer, a database developer, worked for Microsoft called Andreas Freund. He says that he was benchmarking Postgres changes when he noticed that SSHD processes were using a surprising amount of CPU. Think of how crazy this is and how much of a legend Andres is. Well, he was working on a database benchmark. He saw how much memory a process was using and thought, huh, this is weird. I better investigate. Most of us wouldn't be that curious and would have ignored it or would not even know what a surprising amount of CPU is. Thanks to his curiosity, Andres discovered that another program, the backdoor, was intercepting functions related to the SSHD binary. And that is why the program was taking more time and more CPU than normal. SSH is a protocol used to remotely log in from one computer to another. It is what developers use to log into their server from their personal laptop. It is super important and that was what the backdoor was targeting. Even the CEO of Microsoft tweeted about Andres accidental discovery. While we know what the backdoor was targeting, we don't know yet how it works 100%. We have to wait for security researchers to reverse engineer it to learn more about it. Now that the backdoor has been reported, the GitHub page for the XZ project is disabled. People are investigating and the Linux distributions have been notified about it. The backdoored versions of XZ utils are 5.6.0 and 5.6.1. So it's very unlikely you have them since they are too new. But you can run XZ version in your console to check. But this isn't a happy ending. All code touched by Giatan is now tainted. Giatan, whoever they are, were pushing code for two years to XZ, which means that every single commit they made has to be analyzed with very careful eyes. Or projects like Ubuntu, Debian, and Fedora will have to revert to using a version of the package released before the Giatan story began. It is important to remember that this backdoor was caught by accident, which means that there is a chance that this isn't an isolated incident. And there are more backdoors like that one out in the wild. Put in open source projects using similar methods. This goes to show how fragile open source is. So much open source software relies on developers working for free to maintain it, even if it's software that powers billion dollar companies. In this case, the attackers were able to compromise a project just by offering to help the lone, maybe born out, busy developer that was maintaining XZ all these years all by himself. It may be the first time we see this, but I'm sure it won't be the last. Before I go, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Databricks. In an AI world, those who are good with data and AI will be the next generation of leaders. And that's why you should join the Databricks Data Intelligence Day. Databricks is a data plus AI company based in Silicon Valley. They created the Lake House category and are founded by the same people behind Apache Spark, Delta Lake, and ML Flow. Databricks Data Intelligence Day, Databricks' largest annual event in Korea, is a free in person event that showcases data driven, generative AI innovations, data intelligence platforms, and enterprise best practices. It will take place on Tuesday, April 23, 2024, at COEX in Seoul, South Korea. Whether you are a data engineer, architect, or anyone interested in data and AI, come and join the event. There is plenty to learn and participate in. At this event, you will learn about the Databricks Data Intelligence Platform, an integrated platform that brings AI to data and data to AI. You will learn about the best practice cases from global companies like JetBlue, Condé Nast, Block, Providence, Lippert, Chevron, and Philips. David Major, General Manager of Product, and Barry Dober, General Manager of Sales for Generative AI, will also be presenting a keynote. In addition, there will be seven technical sessions delivered by Databricks Solutions Architects. There will be presentations of generative AI use cases from prominent Korean companies such as LG Electronics, Crafton, Hyperconnect, Shinsege, IC, Yogiote, Chongyu Gak, and Bagel Code. This will be the biggest event in Korea for the data and AI community. It is completely free and all you have to do click the link below to register. Learn about the Databricks Data Intelligence Platform from a variety of real-world customer cases and technical sessions in the Databricks Data Intelligence Day. Don't miss it and be sure to register. Thank you for watching as always. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.